Well, we always said Renault is a human brand, you know, and because we're a French brand, and this is why we wanted to make sure our cars look sensual, because humans are sensual after all, we're not square, we don't have hard lines. So this is the reason why our design language is very soft, with beautiful highlights. Then we said Renault is a French brand, a Latin brand, and our cars need to be warm, they need to give you a warm feeling. And finally, we are a popular brand, so we make live cars for every stage in life, because we want to connect with our customers. So. If you fall in love, we have a car for you. If you explore the world, we have crossovers. If you start a family, we have cars. And this is the way, even if you achieve wisdom, for some of us, we have cars for you, like the electric vehicles or an Espace. And so we try to really connect our design philosophy to our customers. Yeah, I think for me, a good car is like meeting a beautiful person, you know? When the person approaches you, you see him from far, and you just see the silhouette of this person, and if he's well or proportioned or not. Then you get closer and you start to look at the clothes, the characteristics, the lines of the face. And then when you get even closer, you shake hands, you look each other in the eye and you touch and you embrace. Now, a car is very similar. You look at a car from a, very, from a long distance, you see where the wheels are, the overhangs, the surfaces, the graphics. You come closer, you see the surface, the highlights, and then you get into the car, you touch it, and you want to make sure that every step of this way is a positive experience and increases the depth of the experience. The big challenge with the quid was, of course, uh, the, the purchase power of, of our customers, and this car had to fit in that box, you know, a very affordable price. But at the same time, it needs to be an aspirational car too. And this is the big, I think, seeming contradiction or the tension we had in the project. How can we make a car for a very low price, but make it aspirational? And the key to the success was in fact the fact that we gave it an SUV uh, appearance. Because we knew that in the Indian market, correct me if I'm wrong, SUVs are highly esteemed, uh, sedans are next, and then hatchbacks are considered more low on the totem pole. So we try as best as we could to create an A-segment car, micro car, but with SUV looks, even though it did have 13-inch wheels, and I'd never been asked to design a car with 13-inch wheels before. Yeah, in terms of shapes, you are a little bit restrained because normally you would stamp apart four or five or even six times to achieve the final form and then you can go really sharp, you can get really, uh, you can imagine, you can really go into detail. In the quid, there is no part that has been stamped more than three times. So you are dealing with uh, a certain simplicity in shapes. Then um, you can also imagine we had to design very lightweight because the way to get the cost down is to remove pieces and to make pieces much thinner or much smaller than you would normally want to do. Um, a third element is uh, the cheapest pieces are the pieces who aren't there. So you will find only one wiper. You find that the wheels have only three bolts. Some, some of these things, we, I think we are on the limit of what is acceptable, but we were so uh, focused on having a good basis to start from that this was really strong for the development of the car. More than ever again, I think it was absolutely key that engineering, uh, but also purchasing, work together because one of the key success reasons for the quid, um, you have to imagine in a normal design project, design develops a car, gives it to engineering, I simplify here, and say, just make it. And they have three months to negotiate with the suppliers and then they make it. Now, we finished the car and uh, the head of uh, the program team took one and a half year to negotiate with all the suppliers. And if the suppliers had ideas of how to make the car cleverer, uh, more frugal, more inventive, then they would come back to design and we would do many of these loops. And this is normally something we never do. And we were doing the grill 50 times, even though it wouldn't change that much in shape, but we would be able to really reduce the cost down to what it, what it ended up being with. Now I think you're right that there are regional differences because in Europe, I think people are used to life cycles being six, seven years. Uh, because we come from life cycles that were 12 years, you know, so people accept that a car has, needs a certain time to install itself, gets a facelift and revive. India, however, is a different uh, kettle of fish, you know. This is a country where people would like to have a change every year or every two years, 
and they are very impatient and they always want something new. And we had to really change our processes, our way of thinking, to make sure that every year we could offer some animation, some life to the, to the lineup to keep the cars alive. And this has been, become for us a huge learning experience. If you want to be a good designer, you have to learn to communicate with your drawings. So the first thing, advice I would give to you and to your, uh, the, the boys and girls watching is learn how to draw and learn how to explain what you want with your drawings. Because as a designer, it doesn't matter what language you speak, it doesn't matter where you come from, your drawing is who you are. This is what one of the main reasons I find designer such an honest job. I have found jobs in Italy, in Japan, uh, in the US without speaking a word of the language and I managed to get a job based on my portfolio. So your drawings is the first thing. You need to have passion for cars, you need to have talent of course, but you need to be also want to work hard. And this is not the key only for success in car design, but the key for success in general.